Alright, welcome back. Back with another pickup. Might have seen this. I got this from Sun Up Cycles. This is a Diamondback WCF 2.0. It's a, a carbon frame, so it has carbon fiber tubing but steel joints. And it's a pretty cool frame. Has a little bit of a fade from black to red. I think pretty cool. Came with a seat post clamp and I was able to find a seat post. This is 27.0 if anyone's wondering. And then this fork came with it. It's uh, originally, it came with a suspension fork. I'll throw the pick up here. Toby was telling me that Jed, previous owner, found this fork, Diamondback fork, and thought it fit pretty well, kind of same color and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna build it up as a rigid. I don't think the height is gonna matter too much. But yeah, overall pretty cool frame. This is the saddle that I've got on here for now. I don't know if I'll use this one, but it's a charge saddle, um, like a turbo ripoff. Shout out Black Dad for that one. So yeah, should be a pretty good pickup. I'm gonna clean it up right now and install the headset. Just wanna show you the tubing here. This is a magnet. You can see it sticks here, but then when you drag it down, about here it kind of just falls off basically there's a steel lug or join that goes all the way to here and then this is carbon from here and then the same with the top one you can see sticking on and then here right about here it falls off wcf welded carbon fiber and then designed in usa probably made in taiwan i think official mountain bike of the world championships has these uh snake stays which is basically like this curves. I don't know why they put this decal upside down though. So yeah, someone asked me, can you use T-cut on kind of carbon frames? And the answer is basically yes, because carbon usually has a thick, really thick clear coat on it. I don't know if you can see the carbon pattern here. It might be a little bit hard to see. All right, just taking the forks off and uh, giving it a nice clean. The fork was actually held on by um, a reusable zip tie, which is pretty cool. And here I'm just cleaning it with uh, a little soap and detergent spray first, and then here WD-40, just to get all the kind of grime off. It wasn't too bad, but you can see this little gray bit down the bottom. Um, I'm just using T-Cut to kind of get rid of this overspray. Yeah, it's funny, sometimes when I find bikes, they have a spray paint on them, like overspray paint. So it seems to be a common occurrence in uh, a lot of old bikes. Maybe they just, up near somewhere where in a garage or something where someone's spraying paint but yes yeah, easy to get off with a uh, t-cut comes straight off you can't get it off with wd-40 or anything so yeah you gotta use something a little harsher and then just cleaning one tube at a time taking the little bolts off the bottle mounts t-cut if you don't know it's uh it's kind of like a polish has a little bit of abrasive in it a very very fine abrasive so you kind of liquid sanding the very uh, top coat off ever so slightly. After you tea cut it, you just spray it with water and then buff it up and it should turn out pretty well. You can see some of the gray here, but it came off. All right, here's the frame done. Pretty sweet, I think. Cleaned up pretty well. It's not perfect, but I think it's shined up pretty good. So yeah, so just do the best you can. Should come up sweet. Here's the fork. You can see it has all this gray spray paint on it for some reason. I noticed the frame had it too. I was able to get it off with T-Cut, uh, but yeah, this one's pretty beat, but try to clean it up. And then yeah, not too much to it, just repeat the same process on the fork. You can see I just have the fork in the stand, makes it easy to kind of turn around and work on it. Alright, and that's it on the fork. This fork's pretty beat, but it still came out pretty good, I think. Pretty decent, better than it was before, but yeah, ready to go. All right, here's the headset tool. I just got these parts from Bunnings, just a couple of plates, and what it does is just squeeze in the headset pieces together, headset cups. And then this is the headset. This is a generic one. It's sealed though. You might know from the GT fork video that I was waiting for this headset. So yeah, it arrived, <laughs> it arrived after the build, but now I can use this one for this new build. It also comes with the star nut, but this one already has a star nut installed, so we need to use it. So yeah, all you do is just grease it up. You can grease the inside of the tube and the cups. That's what I like to do. And then just line it up as straight as possible. And you start winding down. If you have uh, graphics on the cups, you might want to line those up as well. But these didn't have any graphics, so went straight down. And then I find that doing just one at a time works best. Helps it easier to adjust to make sure they're going straight. And yeah, that worked out. All right, that went in really easy, actually. No problems, went in straight, clean all the grease up. And now I'm gonna install the crown race. I'm gonna give this steer a clean first, quick clean, just WD-40 in the brush. And then I'm gonna use 
this tool. Old school tool, shout out Darren again, Tioga, and that's the crown race. You put it on and just bang it on. Just gave it a quick clean and greased it up. For some reason, the crown race had a little gap in it, so it went on really easy. Uh, I've never seen that before, but I guess some headsets are like that. And then here, just putting the fork in, sliding it in, fits well. So I'm happy about that. And then there's a little race that goes on top and then the cover. And then, yeah, just putting a zip tie on there now, just to hold it on there while I clean it up. There we go. All right, that's all done. Pretty sweet, I think. All ready to go. All right, and I'm chucking a poll up on my YouTube and also on my Instagram. Thanks everyone for the comments and what they want this bike to be built. I finally decided. It took a little while, but this is what I came up with. Gonna use these wheels. These are the old wheels from the Diamondback single speed build. And you can see it's running 16T on the back. They spin pretty well. I'm gonna change out these tires, I think, just cause they're probably a little bit too knobbly. And I just give them a clean up. And then basically I had these bars and stem and bottle cage donated by Daryl. Shout out Daryl for sending these. He sent them last year and got a perfect frame for it. So I'm gonna, gonna do that. So yeah, these are just 3T Ego Nova limited bars. These are super light carbon bars and then the 3T uh, Axis ARX team stem. This is 100. I'm gonna see if this is too long. If I need to, I'll get a shorter stem It'll be easy, easy to switch out because it's a head and then just bolted so no issues there and then this is just a s works carbon bottle cage so yeah kind of go a little bit carbonish for this build and then these levers i just got myself these are just generic tetro tech tetro levers just single speed ones the cranks the cranks i'm gonna do these 105s i'm gonna try to fit these 105s on i'm gonna show you how to do that in a second how to measure it and i just had this old bb um, donated by Tim and then I'm gonna run a 105 for some reason I have two of these I'm gonna run a 105 chain tensioner so that should work out pretty well and then brakes got this little kind of group set of LX stuff but it's gonna be uh, yeah LX canty brakes so I'm gonna split up the group set but yeah should be fine it's just a rear mech and front mech and the brakes so yeah we'll see how these uh, clean up so yeah, these are 105 road cranks and one of the issues with putting them on is most mountain bike chain stays, they come out a bit further out is for tire clearance and a fatter wheel. So what I'm gonna do is switch that inner ring to the outside and then hopefully I can get a BB that's uh, long enough or my BB here is long enough to push it out. And then for BB size, this is 118. So yeah, I get a lot of questions on what BB size to use and how it would fit. And at the end of the day, you kind of just have to guess. So what I like to do is just, I put it on the bottom here, make sure the crank is on as tight as you can. It's still gonna go in a few millimeters, but basically you just size it up like that to see if it hits the chain stay here and here. So I can see, it might be hard to see on camera, but I can see here is gonna probably hit this ring and here once it's fully in position. Basically, I gotta take it apart and put it on to see if it works. Another reason why I chose 105 is since I'm going with drop bars, should be uh, a little bit road bikey and yeah, things should match up a little bit lighter too. All right, here just cleaning out the BB, just using WD-40. I started using a nylon brush first, but then I ended up using a wire brush and yeah, just kind of brush it out, brush it all out and should clean up pretty well. Wipe it with a paper towel. That's all ready to go. And then just cleaning up this uh, bottom bracket as best I can. It has some rust here, but it spun really well still. So I can see why this was still saved. And I just gave it a quick clean. Try not to get WD-40 in the bearings, of course, but yeah, just kind of do what you can. And I just cleaned out a shell as well. And then here, just installing the BB, make sure you grease it up. A lot of grease is good for this, just to make sure it's, uh, it's gonna go in and you're not gonna cross thread it or anything. So yeah, just take your time when you're putting it in. I usually do it by finger first, just I uh, just do it by hand and then afterwards I will put the, put the tool in and then that will kinda help guide it a little bit better and then you can push it all the way through. Here's other cup, make sure you grease a little bit of the inside as well. I, I grease this just so it doesn't get rusty again. And then here, grease on the outside. And then same thing, just make sure you're screwing it in the right way, and that's all ready to go. 
here, taking off the crank bolts uh, so I can fit the inner chain ring on the outside to see if it will work with my frame. And yeah, it kind of pops off just like that, pretty easy. And then put it on the outside, it's going to give you a little bit more clearance. And I'm just going to sit it on here just for now uh, while I put it on the crank. And basically, just push it all the way on. You can see it has pretty good clearance. It's still going to go in a few millimeter uh, when you tighten it and put it on, but I think this is yeah, more than enough. So I decided to uh, fully load up the BB and that's all ready to go. All right, so it fits, this spins pretty well and just some corro corrosion under the paint on the cranks, but it's still gonna work and I'm gonna clean up as best I can, clean up these parts, chain rings in pretty decent condition. So yeah, should go all right. All right, so yeah, just cleaning this chain ring. You can see uh, I just used WD-40 and just wiped it off a few times and you can see it came out pretty clean. That's all it took. And that was pretty good, pretty happy with that. It's both sides. And then here cleaning up the crank arms. The crank arms with the corrosion or the, the paint, there's not much you can do with it. So I just try to clean it up as best I can. I'm gonna to try to run some T-cut uh, on it, see if it shines up any better. And originally I was gonna try using the, the drill press here just to buff it up, but that didn't really do too much. So I did decide to do it just uh, uh, old school way, just use my hand and that seemed to work a little bit better because you can push a little bit harder and then yeah they shined up all right you know not 100 percent perfect but they're gonna they're gonna do the job and they're better than they were before all right so i'm putting this chain ring on and because i took off the other one right there when you put the chain ring bolt in it's gonna stick out a bit so it's not gonna tighten so what i need is a spacer i'm gonna run this spacer on the back just like this, but you can see it just doesn't fit. For some reason, it's really hard to get these type of spaces. So I'm gonna just file the bottom here and then I have to do that times five. All right, here's one. You can see that's how it fits, just like that. With the little flat bit on the bottom. And I'll just repeat the others. Also, these are special washers with the gap. Obviously, if you can get ones without the gap, you should get them, but um, these are all they had. You can just bend it so it's flat. I forgot what these are called. I'm pretty sure I'll put the word up here when I remember. All right, all done. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't record that bit just because you probably get the idea. But yeah, here, just putting on the, the uh, chain ring on, on the crank. Looking good, I think, looking nice and fresh. And then here installing the crank arm, a little bit of grease on the tapers will stop it from seizing up. And yeah, moment of truth, <laughs> hopefully uh, fits. And then yeah, just screw it on, see how far it goes in. Um, you want to do it up pretty tight. There should be a natural stopping point, so yeah, don't go beyond that. All right, look at that. Pretty decent. Yeah, thank goodness that worked. You can see the spacers actually made it a little bit closer to the chainstay, but um, luckily it worked out. And here just installing the other crank arm, same deal here. Nice and tight. You can see it spins pretty well. Uh, it would be nice to get some crank covers, but I don't think I have any. And then here just putting the wheels on just to take a look. So the crank's on, looking pretty sweet. This is basically what you want to check. Just check that your chain line is relatively straight. All right, here I got a tape measure, little trick tip, I guess. You just push it up against each cog and then see if it's straight. This is fairly straight. I haven't even um, adjusted the back since last time, but yeah, it might be okay just to run it like this. You'll find out once you start riding, basically. All right, here it is. Cranks are on. Um, I think one thing you can check if you're real worried about it, you can check like the distance between here and the ground to see if you can get pedal strike. Remember, this used to come with a suspension fork, but um, I think this clearance is pretty good. This crank is 172.5. If it's trouble, you can always switch to a smaller crank, 160, 165. But yeah, we'll see how this goes for now. All right, so I got these tires. I'm gonna give them a clean up. They're in pretty good condition. They're just slicks, 1.9, I think. But I think they should go pretty well on here. 
it would be nice to get something a little bit more gravelly on the knobs with the knobs on the side but i'm going to chuck these on see how they go and if i need to switch them out i'll switch them out giving the tires a quick wash here this is just using uh, a little bit of detergent and water and soap spray and i just spray it all around use a nylon brush and just gave, gave it a brush up all right these are all done just chuck them on like this this is how i actually did it yeah just make sure that Everything is seated before you start pumping up and yeah, you should be good to go. All right, I think it's looking pretty sweet. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna clean up the wheels a little bit still, the rims. And I'm thinking about maybe making this a uh, uh, two speed or three speed, just in case I wanna ride on gravel or one for the road. One's a little bit harder, one's a little bit easier. I think it'd be cool to have the choice. And right now I'm just gonna put the handlebars on, see how they look. So yeah, I got this cable hanger. I'm gonna put this on because you need one for canty brakes. And when I put it on here, you can see there's a little issue here. It doesn't really fit. You're gonna, I'm gonna have to space it up a little bit. You can see it kind of runs, um, hits the headset right here. So if you're ordering this, just be careful. Depends on your headset. All right, so I was able to just run this one spacer. I think this is a five mil, maybe something like that. But you can see it just fits right here. It's super tight. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, that works well. Putting on the stem here, just make sure you undo the bolts if it feels tight to make sure it uh, gets seated in there. And then you can pay attention to how tight the bolt should be. Uh, I think on the stem, it's all five newton meters so yeah just use the small end of the allen key and that should give you a pretty good feel for it um, do it snug tight enough but not don't go hand all right that's on looking pretty sweet i think it's pretty easy to line up these bars i think this kind of just goes along the top two but then this is flat on top anyway so you want this pretty flat but yeah overall i think it's looking pretty good i think i could go a shorter stem but We'll use this one for now and see how it goes before I switch it out. All right, here's the bike lane one. I'm gonna try this, see if this works. So yeah, you can see the difference between the two. This bike lane one fits without any spaces, has a little bit of a gap that clears the headset. So this is bike lane and then this is the Tektro one. Just a little bit different design. You can see this one tapers a little bit more in and this one's kind of doesn't. Or well, the distance between this front bit and this bit, this one's bigger and that's uh, shorter. Just so you know the difference between the two, if anyone out there cares. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna run the bike lane one just because my headset pops out a little bit and I don't have that much steerer. If I had more steerer, I might run the other one. But yeah, I'll run this one for now. All right, there we have it. What do you think? All right, cleaning up these brakes. These are Dior LX brakes, old uh, old Canty brakes, a lot of parts. It's always fun taking these out of bag. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Luckily I wasn't, but yeah. Uh, just take them all apart. And what I'm gonna do is soak the rusty parts in a vapor rust and then make sure uh, I keep the pads separate because you don't wanna get a vapor rust on the pads. And then I just put in a little strainer here. The strainer, yeah, uh, I just got from Daiso, which is for 280 or something like that. It's really good. I use it all the time. And then that's a vapor rust concentrate. Just showing you a little screenshot if you need to look it up or pause the video. Um, but then here, I ended up just soaking it overnight. Cleaning up the wheels here, just use brake cleaner on the rim on both sides. And then just a tissue paper or paper towel and just give it a good wipe down and then I clean I end up cleaning it the, the inside the hub as well a little bit these this wheel set was pretty decent already so there wasn't too much to it I think I already repacked the bearings in a previous episode or previous uh, restoration this is uh, looking pretty good just want to make sure it's nice and clean all right now we got this we got 16t here to uh, 42 up front so previously I had 16 41 and I could basically go anywhere up hills and stuff was pretty chill so I'm gonna add this 13 T just on the inside here just so I have uh, the choice if I want to go fast I'll do this so I think basically this is gonna end up being my road one and this will be off-road but yeah you don't really know until you try it all right, so putting on the cog, all you need is a chain whip tool 
and then uh, you know <laughs> a cassette removal tool and then I just end up putting the cog on the outside all right there we go just like that all right it's giving this uh, derailleur a quick clean it's not going to be a full resto but I'll clean it up as best I can um, there's no bend cycles uh, level but uh, yeah just kind of quick clean up but yeah just brushing all the grease off this old grease it was pretty gunky pretty dirty but it did have these nice little pulleys with the bearings I think ABEC 5s <laughs> actually said ABEC 5s on that pretty funny um, but yeah just give it a quick clean so yeah Shimano 105 is kind of like the road bikes uh, Dior I reckon just like super solo middle group um, Shimano 600 probably be like the XT stuff but yeah People actually use, used to use this Shimano 105 derailleur back in the day on their mountain bikes just to save weight. So yeah, kind of coming uh, full circle here. Use uh, a little bit of that old school vibe. But yeah, it's a pretty nice derailleur. And then here, just chucking it on. Um, a little bit of grease here and then, yeah, <laughs> just screw it on tight. Make sure it works. Okay, that's on. What you want to do now is set your limit screws here, so probably about there for the low, and then about here for the high, and then you'll be able to adjust it using the barrel adjuster and there's a cable in there. So yeah, it looks like you only really need to set the high one because the low one can only go so far. And then I usually push this down because I want to simulate how the chain tension is going to go. This is just an old gear cable. And what I'm going to do is just loop it through here like that. I'm going to make sure this is wound all the way in. And put it through. All right, now when I turn this, it's going to move this over. So yeah, a good trick is to remember the number of turns that it takes when you went all the way in, you know, lines up with the smaller one. Uh, might end up taking about 10 turns to line up with the, the bigger one. You can see here I'm just winding it clockwise for it to kind of drop in. Works pretty well. And then to shift it up, 10 turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there we yeah, there we there we have it. Here's it from the other angle. Works pretty well. So yeah, with the tension, I kind of just freestyled it. I think this is pretty good. So this jockey wheel is kind of straight, but then when you go on the smaller one, you can still see it has some tension. It's on the smaller cog now. You can still see the tension's pretty good. I'm just gonna give this a go. Seems like this is pretty good. But yeah, I might have to cut the chain a little bit if it's not enough. But yeah, we'll see how this goes for now. So yeah, one of the reasons why I didn't try this in the past was because uh, I was concerned about how you would change it when you're actually riding out. But if you just remember the number of turns, it actually works pretty well. You can see I just turned it 10 turns. I wind it all the way in and it just drops in. Here I just wind it 10 turns up. I just count in my head this time. <laughs> and then you can see even just like stationary, you can just do that and it switches out. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Chain seems like it's going pretty well too. This is just a Dura Ace chain that I had and I just re greased it up. I didn't show it on camera. Um, just yeah, just forgot to film it. Just smooth loop wax and it, yeah, it works pretty well. All right, here we go. Taking stuff out of vapor rust finally. I think it's soaked for like a day and a half. And pouring everything back in, you can see I'm just gonna give it a wash. And then when I poured everything out, I realized that the vapor rust didn't really work at all. So I decided to do it my uh, old school way, uh, or the original way that I used to do it, just WD-40 and a wire brush. It does take a little bit longer, of course, but um, it's still doable. So if you don't have access to vapor rust, you can do it this way, or you can also try soaking it in vinegar. But when you soak it in vinegar, just make sure you don't soak it for too long because it could start to pit the parts. All right, putting it back together. I have a dedicated tutorial, but here's how you do it. You take the gold ring and you put it on the left. 
um, just like that with the long bit on the end and then a little plastic bit. The little plastic bit has a little L and R on it usually so you can know which one's which. So this is the left one, put these bolts on and there's one done. Same with the left one, I'm doing the left one again. Super speed, you can see how that's done. Now the right one, so you take the silver spring, put that in, little R plastic washer and then same again, the washer, concave washer goes in there, other concave washer goes on the outside and then put this little nut on and then you're good and then repeat that for the other side. These other brake cable hangers are pretty straightforward, just put a little cable in and do up the bolt, not too much to it and then gave it a little one last brush up and yeah they're looking good ready to be installed so yeah just grease it grease your bosses up make sure you cover it all the way around and then you can slide it in. I usually put the spring in the middle hole to kind of start off with if you need more tension you can put it in a, a hole that gives you more tension but uh, the middle almost always works for me and then yeah just screw these on tight you don't want these brakes coming loose and then um, just make sure they spring back in and that's how you know you got the springs in the right way. Here, same with the back ones, um, just same process really. Make sure they spring back. And then here, putting on these levers, um, yeah, just because the bars are carbon, just be careful when you slide them on and when you do them up, make sure you don't do them up too tight because otherwise they're going to crack the handlebars. Um, I just basically do them tight enough so they fit snug without moving and then here two ways you can align your hoods is usually with old school levers you align it with the bottom of the lever but here I'm just aligning the hoods with the top flat bit of the bar since this bar has a, a flat bit anyway I think it would go go well um, and then just yeah make sure you do left and right make sure they feel good you should be over the bike at this point um, just so you can kind of gauge how it is and then once you're happy with it, you can uh, tighten everything up. Make sure it works in the drop position as well. All right, that's all done. Just make sure you stand over the top when you're trying to align it straight. I just align these pretty much to the sides here. And this is what it looks like on top. Seems pretty decent. Here just cutting the cables, um, when you cut the cables what you want to do is just make sure it's all the way in before you start doing this, before you start measuring. So you want to turn it both sides to make sure it doesn't rub that much and then when you cut your cables just make sure it's nice and clear. You can use the old spoke and file to finish off the ends. And yeah just make sure, double check, put it in again and make sure it works well. Um, I did end up putting a little bit of tape on there just to keep the cables in place. Um, I think this helps when you wrap bars and then I end up doing the same on the other side here. And then putting the brake cables in, um, yeah, so you just slide it through. I did forget to cut a brake housing on the back there, so I just did that real quick. And then I'm just sliding the brake cables through just to make sure they're nice and uh, tight. You can pull on the lever as well to help make sure they're seated. And then here installing this little hanger. This hanger just has one on one side. The longer one usually goes on the back if you have two different lengths. And then you just kind of want to get it, gauge it like that so it's kind of where you want it. You want both sides to be kind of even. And then you can see it's working now. All right, that's pretty sweet. What you want to do is try to match these up so they're the same and then have these kind of aligned up and down. If it swings over too much on this side like that, what you can do is wind in this little bolt and it should pull it over, pull it over like that a bit more. It'll adjust the spring tension. So yeah, seems all right at the moment. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and then see how it goes once I put the brake pads on. And the same thing on the front here, just yeah, make sure they're aligned to the fork, usually straight up and down. There's no real rule, but I think that looks the neatest. And then yeah, just tighten up for now. And you can see this is working well too. All right, just trying this out, that out. Chucky, Marigold Cyclery, he gave me this. This is usually a brake lock, but I just put the tension on a little bit, just where I want the brake to go. And then I'm gonna put the pads flush against the rim. Take that off, should be sweet. So yeah, just putting on the pads here. Uh, I misplaced my little spanner tool. 
and it made it, I had to use the adjustable wrench for this, so it made it a little bit harder. But yeah, I got, got that at the end. Um, having this little that little band really works well, I think. I think I'm going to do that more in the future. And then I end up doing the same with the, with the one on the back. Just make sure your pads are facing the right way. These ones have little arrows on them, so that's kind of how you tell. And then just give the wheels a spin, make sure they're clearing. You can see this is working well. And then, yeah, I like to tuck this cable in and then just give it a snip. And then that's all ready to go. All right, just got these uh, velo wraps. It's not too much to it, just kind of like cork material. But yeah, I'm going to chuck them on. So yeah, the infamous bar. <laughs> bar. I did a few reels on how to install bars, but uh, bar tape. But um, yeah, there's always someone who likes to do it the other way. So this is the way I like to do it. Just basically, I wrap it so when I'm under drops, it's tightening the grip. So you're falling to the outside. You can hear so I'm doing the figure eight. You just go down, up, down, and then back across. Just like that. And what it does is switches the reverse. It reverses the, the overlap on the top. So when you're on the top and you're, you're climbing, you're pulling the bars towards you. So that's going to tighten the grip that way as well. So yeah, that's kind of how I do it. Um, I think a lot of people do it this way, but there's always some people out there that do it differently. And then here, these uh, bar tape comes with strips of tape, but they're quite fat, so I like to cut it down, cut a little strip down to make it nice and thin, and that's kind of what it looks like finished. And don't forget to pop the hoods down, and then if you need to, cut a little bit extra on the bottom, and then put the, the bar end on there. And then same with the other side here, take off the plastic wrap, take off the little inner tape on the inside, the grippy tape, and then yeah, up to the hood. Go up here and down and then back towards yourself and then go up again and then start wrapping. And that's how it's done. Hopefully uh, this works out for you. If you don't, obviously if you don't like this way, you can do it another way. But this year yeah, works for me the best. And then yeah, just try to cut it straight here with the same gap on each side here. I also measured it. What you can do is measure it to the millimeter. It's 36 and I put a little bit of masking tape as a guide and then you just tape up to the masking tape. I cut it here so it sits on the bottom and then the tape I start off here so the end of the tape finishes at the bottom as well. But yeah, all these little things I like to do uh, just to keep it nice and clean. Um, but yeah, I found out this is uh, kind of what works for me. I think that looks good. Yeah, nice and even. So I measured it up to the little grippy, cleat grippy bit. And then here, just yeah, just flipping the hoods and then putting the barring in. And that's all done, looking great. Pretty stoked with this. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, pretty even on both sides. And yeah, happy with it. Here now I'm just taking off the seat. The seat post is looking pretty rough, so I just want to give it a quick clean, maybe a, a buff up. A little quick clean of the seat post clamp here, just a D40 and nylon brush and then wipe it down with the tissue paper. I did end up using a wire brush inside the bolt a little bit to get rid of the rust and um, yeah just clean it up best I could. That looks pretty good, just pop that on. And then with the seat post, uh, I just used WD-40 and then I end up using a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper, just 600 wet and dry just to try to get that black stuff off, but I think it was pretty pretty on there, so uh, it's a little bit on there still, but overall a lot cleaner. And then here, just putting on the seat post, grease it up, make sure it doesn't seize. Uh, this is 27.0, I did try 27.2 and the 27.2 did not fit, so yes, yeah, definitely 27.0. Here, finishing off the wire, and then one last thing, chuck it on the pedals, and that's it.
All right, yeah, the bike is super sick, super fun, super light. You can just pick up and go. I like the smooth tires, actually. You can still go on gravel, and it's not that bad. Shout out Daryl, Tim, Chris, and Justin for donating to this build. Thank you, people who bought new merch and stickers. That helps out too. And hope you guys liked the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and catch you next time. Peace.